St. Louis has a rich and important history of activism. Activists are people who take action to make a change in society for what they think is the greater good for everyone. This has always been an area where women have led the way. Many different St. Louis women have played an important role in almost all areas of activism, including disability rights, LGBTQ+, Black Lives Matter, and more. We will look at three women featured in this gallery who were activists for different issues right here in St. Louis. Arsenia Williams was a teacher and advocate for children across St. Louis. Nicknamed the Human Dynamo, Williams held different roles to help better community. She was a teacher, served as the president of the St. Louis and Missouri chapters of the National Association of Colored Women, was a founding member of the Phyllis Wheatley YWCA, where she also held leadership roles. She taught Sunday school, volunteered at her church, and was the dean of the Women's Home Missionary Society. She also opened up clubs, which were kind of like a common space or recreation centers that provide resources to the community. She opened them all across St. Louis, and they were dedicated to the enrichment of African-American women and girls. She did so much to help others in St. Louis. I just told you a little bit about the story of Arsenia Williams, and one of the ways we share information and tell the stories in a museum is through artifacts or objects. I am going to share with you several artifacts, and it will be your task to pick which artifact you would put in the exhibit to help tell her story. You can also go to our collection search on our website and pick your own object that you would use. Now I do want to note that not all of these artifacts may have belonged to this exact person, but represent something that they would have used or seen during their lifetime and also would help tell their story. So if you do a collection search, you might not find something exactly related or belonging to that person, but would still be a great way to help tell their story. Here is a poster for the YWCA. The YWCA is a nationwide women's club that helps provide resources and support to women in the area. During Williams' life, the YWCA's were segregated, and the Phyllis Wheatley YWCA, of which she was a founding member, served black girls and women in the Mill Creek Valley neighborhood. And it was only the fifth in the whole United States of YWCA's that opened up to serve black women and girls. Here is an image of Sumner High School from the early 1900s. Sumner Normal School was an extension of Sumner High School, that had a teacher training program for African-American students. This was later renamed and became part of Harris Stowe University. Williams graduated from this teacher training program and taught in St. Louis public schools. Here we have a drawing of Sumner High School for our 250 and 250 exhibit that you can view now online. When picking artifacts, curators are often limited by what they can find in the museum's collection. They can only use what people in the past chose to collect and preserve. For a long time, we collected stories from a limited perspective, often leaving out objects that told the stories of women, and especially women of color. So now, sometimes we use artists to help create visuals, including this drawing of Sumner High School, the first black high school and where Williams graduated from in 1895. All right, pause now and discuss which artifact you would want to pick to tell William's story. You can pick from these three or search our collections and pick your own. Think about why you chose the artifact you did. How does this artifact tell her story? And what parts of the story might it not tell or that people still might have questions about? So go ahead and pause now and discuss. Fanny Sellens was a fierce labor activist. When Sellens started working in a garment factory, she quickly noticed and experienced the awful conditions. She then started working to advocate for better conditions for garment workers right here in St. Louis. She helped found the St. Louis chapter of the International Ladies Garment Workers Union and later became chief negotiator. During strikes in 1911, she worked to negotiate a wage increase 
and lower the workday from 14 hours to nine hours for more than 400 women. After that, she continued to work to advocate for unions and sadly was murdered during a violent strike in 1919. Just like before, we are going to take a look at various artifacts and it will be up to you to pick one to tell her story. You can pick from the ones that I'm about to show you or use the collection to find your own. Here's a picture of a group at the International Ladies Garment Union Officer Installation Ceremony. While this picture was taken after Selens' death, we can see here that the union chapter that she helped start continued to work here in St. Louis and help support garment workers. There even ended up being several chapters. Selens led many strikes and helped improve working conditions for garment workers. However, the work didn't end with her. People continued to fight for better conditions and pay using similar methods to what Selens was using. Here, women are on strike again to continue to advocate for garment workers. Selens started working in a garment factory in the early 1910s. Garment work was an important industry here in St. Louis and continued to be. Here in the 1930s, we can see women working in a factory and get a little bit better an idea of what factories were like during this time. All right, pause now and discuss which artifact you want to pick or look up your own to tell her story. Think about why you chose the artifact you did, how does the artifact tell her story, and what parts of the story might it not tell or that people still might have questions about. Next, we have S. Louise Marsh, who was an advocate and lobbied for children's rights. At the time that Marsh was active in fighting for children's rights, women were not given representation in government. When Marsh learned about the sole guardianship law in Missouri that allowed the fathers of children total control over their rights, including the right to sell their children, she went to a representative and labor law lawyer, Alroy Phillips, and asked him to sponsor a bill that would allow mothers equal say in their children's lives. She got the support of many women in the area, and in the end, she was successful, and a bill was passed in 1913 giving equal rights for both parents. Just like before, we are going to look at various artifacts, and it'll be up to you to pick one to tell her story. You can pick from the ones that I'm about to show you, or use the collection search to find your own. Here was a circular for a pamphlet by S. Louise Marsh to advocate for the better treatment of children. She was planning to distribute them at the 1915 DAR, or Daughters of the American Revolution, National Congress in Washington, DC. Here is an essay Marsh wrote for the Daughters of the American Revolution. It is titled, Missouri's Part in Four Wars, and is of course about Missouri's role in different wars on American soil. This essay appears to be a draft that has been edited, and you can see her signature at the end. Marsh wrote many essays this was one advocating for legislators to propose a joint guardianship law in the Missouri government. The law was later successfully passed in 1913. Pause now and discuss which artifact you want to pick or look up your own on the Missouri History Museum collection search. Think about why you chose the artifact you did. How does that artifact tell her story? And what parts of the story might it not tell or that people still might have questions about? Thank you so much for learning with me about these women activists in St. Louis. Check out the other gallery stops talking about St. Louis founding women and entrepreneurs and innovators, as well as our other homeschool day activities and crafts. Share with us any thoughts or questions you have by tagging us on social media and using the hashtag MHSLearn. And remember to keep making history.